Hey guys, it's Brian Nett from Howard Algae Works. Today we're gonna to be doing part three in our three-part series of a lecture we gave at the Asian Oceana Congress on Neuroradiology. And the subject was deep learning for neuro-CT, specifically comparing that with iterative reconstruction. So today we're gonna to be talking about the third part, which is actually evaluation. So how do we evaluate the deep learning methods in comparison with the uh, iterative reconstruction? If you haven't seen the first two sections in this talk, definitely check those out in the links below or up in the cards and strap on in for part three. Don't worry, it's not gonna be as bad as most trilogies here. The evaluation part actually I think is kind of interesting. Coming up here at How Radiology Works, and if that kind of thing sounds good to you, click below on subscribe and click on that little bell icon so you get notified when we release new content. Then we're gonna talk about the evaluation. Again, we're gonna evaluate the contrast to noise as well as the space resolution and the noise power spectrum. These authors might be in the audience today here. This is from Kim et al. And they looked at neuro images and they looked at the standard Acer, which they were using at their facility, and then perform, for instance, the contrast to noise ratio. So if you look here, the contrast to noise of these clinically relevant differences in soft tissue was close to two in the case of the Acer images. And then it was significantly increased for each level of the deep learning image reconstruction up to a little bit less than four here. So you can see there's significant improvement in the contrast to noise in the clinical. The modulation transfer function looks at how different frequencies will propagate through the imaging system. So in general, the higher frequencies, the values that have higher frequencies or change more quickly will be attenuated more as they go through the system. So your MTF will typically look something like this. And the MTF can be measured for different tasks or different tissue types. So this is the work of Stikatovich et al. And this demonstrates that for each of these technologies, FBP, Acer, and DLIR, in comparison with previous techniques for iterative reconstruction, all of these technologies are demonstrating good agreement of the MTF as a function of the different tissue types. So in each of these cases, you can see good agreement of the MTF and the MTF for the deep learning well matches the filtered back projection results. Next, we looked at the noise texture. So these are some data that we took early on of a liver actually that I got from the store of a cow liver. And then we put bones around that liver. And these actually have the same noise, but different noise texture. So this is a level of IR above what's typically used. And then we compare that to a high setting of the deep learning. You can see significant improvement in image texture. And how can we quantify that? We can quantify it in a measure similar to the MTF, which is actually called the noise power spectrum. So instead of looking at how the values are attenuated of the actual CT number, as it goes through the system, now we're looking at the noise values or the relative changes between the neighboring pixels. How is the noise going to be attenuated as a function of spatial frequency? That's what we call the noise power spectrum. And we can then normalize that as well so that we have the same area under the curve for each of these. And in that case, you can see that filtered back projection and deep learning well match one another, whereas Acer is shifted to the left. And this is a general property of the iterative reconstruction techniques in that this more plasticky appearance is resulting because the noise power has been shifted to the left in changing the noise correlation. Again, this is in that Stikatovich paper as well. We also note that as far as noise power, the new training which was performed is different than other training methodologies. I wonder what we've got in the fridge today. 
Whoa, YouTube takeout? For more bite-sized content about how radiology works, click below on subscribe and then click on that little bell icon so you can get notified when we release new content. We tried the idea of just making a faster MBIR using deep learning. And it's definitely possible to do. You can train the deep learning network using the MBIR data as the ground truth. And you can get noise power spectrum, which show that the deep learning MBIR can well match MBIR. This is not what we wanted to do as far as our commercial product, but we wanted to say that there are different methodologies and the training is very important in this case. We also want to point out a couple areas of interest, especially for neuroradiology that you might want to be looking at for your clinical research. Number one is thin slice imaging using DLIR. You can see here filtered back projection. This data is all with the same exact data to make these images. This is filtered back projection at five millimeters. And then these two are 1.25 millimeters. You can see the significant reduction in the image noise with the DLIR. You can also see the image texture for the 1.25 millimeters now better approximates five millimeter filtered back projection. This same thing can be appreciated on clinical data here. Again, you can see in the five millimeter case, there's some structures which are not seen in the 1.25 because these are thinner reconstructions, but in the 1.25s, they are both the thinner reconstructions, but you can see that the DLIR has significantly lower noise in comparison with the iterative reconstruction. We also wanna point out a second case, in addition to thin slice imaging that we think is important, is that for axial imaging, it's the case that we can use DLIR and have a side benefit because we know there's going to be reduction in the noise. We can use a side benefit of having that reduction in noise to modify the view weighting such that on the system, we can have significant improvements in motion artifacts. So going from this type of image to this type of image, and this was in fact the first case of our medical evaluation. It wasn't a cherry pick case, but just the first one off the shelf there. So you can see there is significant improvement and that's another area of clinical interest. Finally, I wanna summarize and also say one thing that what we're not trying to do here. With the deep learning network currently, we are not trying to modify the physics of the system, and we're also not trying to change the contrast in the system. So the network for deep learning on the system today is trying to estimate the image noise to reduce the image noise in the image. We're not trying to change the contrast in the image. There are methods to modify the contrast as well as the edge definition between the gray and the white matter. One which was recently introduced by GE Healthcare is what we call enhanced boundaries. And in that case, you can see we're going from enhanced boundaries off all the way to the highest setting of the enhanced boundaries feature where you can see the CT number between the gray and the white is more accentuated, as well as the boundaries are better visualized between the gray and the white matter with this new EB3 option. So finally, to summarize, one take home point is from DLIR, what we're trying to accomplish is the same noise reduction as far as CNR and improved texture, such that it matches filtered back projection. And then if we come back for next year, what things we could talk about then would be GSI and how we can do spectral imaging with DLIR, as well as continuous improvements that we're making on the deep learning image reconstruction. I really appreciate your time. Again, this has been Brian Nett with GE Healthcare.